Hello and welcome to the Tank Club and welcome to the New World Tank Build as well. This is a build designed for completing PvE content in New World MMO as a tank. It can be used for completing the hardest content including mutated level 3 expeditions. If you are looking for something a bit more beginner friendly, we already have that. Go and check out the other video and the webpage for the beginner tank New World guide as well. There are many ways to tank in New World with a variety of gear and weapon options. You can change your abilities. There's lots of different things you can do. In this guide, we'll find information on some of the most effective tank setups for completing New World content. Now, this is all obviously my opinion from my personal experience. You may have other ideas and those are also more than acceptable. If you want to make some suggestions on things that you like to do, please post those in the comments below or go and join the Tank Club Discord where we've got hundreds and hundreds of other New World tanks as well. So first we're going to move on to attributes and one of the first things I'm going to mention is we've seen a lot of people having a lot of difficulties with the attributes because of the magnify gear where it inflates one stat and then severely reduces another. So if you want to balance these out, the easiest way to do so is to find the break point in, we, in which everything switches from one side to the other. So if you place your points in until you see the switch, so there it is, and then you want to top this off until it happens again, until they balance out to be equal. So we're on 275, 275. So now we can see we've got 56 spare points and we can go and distribute those. And we reach this break point now where we've got the two extra points. So we can just put those into dexterity or wherever you want. And when we assign that, we've now got a nice split. The best general attribute setup is with 300 constitution with the rest of your points into strength. With 300 con, you're going to get a lot of benefits. These include all health consumables are 10% stronger. We've got increased physical armor. When above 50% health, we've got increased max health, reduced crit taken, increased physical and elemental armor. 60% reduction while at full health, and then the really important one, melee attacks gain grit. Grit is useful because it prevents you from getting staggered, so you can hold positions better, you can use light and heavy attacks without getting knocked back. Really, really strong. And you need to be using light and heavy attacks a lot as a tank because it's basically impossible to perma block as a tank in New World. So to maintain your stamina, you need to drop block for large portions of time during combat, you need to be doing light and heavy attacks. Grit is also very valuable since... There is an essential perk on your sword, which is refreshing move. It reduces your ability cooldowns from light and heavy attacks. So you want to make use of that. And your other weapons benefit greatly from you doing regular light and heavy attacks. So grit is really, really important. Now, there are a number of different type of subs that you can go for. So if you are a beginner tank, you would likely go with the 300 to 350 con. You can go with 0 to 50 in focus. Now, people are, might be a bit surprised at that. With 25 points into focus, you're going to get 5% ability cooldown reduction and 10% incoming healing with 50 points. So it's not essential to do this, but it is an option and it's especially useful if you're using a flail. One of the setups we're going to be looking at is a tank that's potentially using a greatsword or a spear. And when you are getting to those kind of levels where you are using those harder weapons, using lower constitution and putting more points into decks, is also an option as well. So in that case, you might use 200 constitution, you'd put 150 points into dex, and then put the rest into strength. If you're a really experienced tank, you might only need 100, somewhere 100 to 200 constitution, 150 in dex and more into strength. These are really, really, it, like the most generalized setup, the easiest one to go for is this 300-300 split, but it is optional to change things later down the line as you become more experienced and less reliant on the grit and those kind of things. Obviously with your points into strength, you're gonna gain increased light attack damage, heavy attack damage, physical damage, stamina regen rate while exhausted is increased, damage on stun slowed and rooted enemies is increased, increased stamina regen while performing basic melee attacks, and then base damage while under 9% health is increased by 7%. Obviously in decks as well, we've got some benefits there which are gonna be really useful, especially if we are using that great sword or spear. Okay, moving on to the weapons, and there are a number of different weapon combinations that you can use. My personal favourite, one that I think is close to unbeatable in a lot of ways for most players and most tanks, is going to be the sword and the shield combined with the warhammer. Excellent option. Another, another option would be there to replace the sword and shield with the flail and shield. You could also use the great sword plus the warhammer. Another option would be to use the great sword alongside the spear. And then you could also use the flail and the shield or the sword and the shield with a spear as well. 
So the flail and shield is a new weapon option and it can replace the sword and shield as your main hand weapon. Ideally, you would combine it with a warhammer and to optimize further, you switch it from warhammer to spear for boss fights, but the flail and the shield isn't offering quite enough by itself to be able to cover you for everything. So a warhammer is a really good partner to that weapon. Sword and shield is still very, very useful for PVE tanking. People seem to try, they're trying to move away from it as much as they can, but it's hard to move away from a weapon that is so well created. It offers a lot of benefits to you as a tank, which can assist you in damage reduction. It has increased damage compared to the flail. If you take the leadership route, it offers increased group damage. There's a lot of benefits in there for the sword and the shield and some good debuffs as well. It's got a nice little variety. It does more damage than the flail. So it's still a very, very strong option. And especially when you combine it with the right weapon perks, it is absolutely brilliant. And you can become almost immortal. The Warhammer is just a great utility weapon. You have Rend, Weaken, alongside multiple sources of crowd control. You can stun, you can stagger, you can pull enemies down, immobilize, all sorts of things. It's really hard to drop this weapon as it has so many benefits to your group and it's a pretty good damage weapon for a tank as well. It's amazing for ad pulls and you become an absolute juggernaut in AoE situations. Now the greatsword is something you can use and you would use it as the main hand weapon. You replace the sword and the shield or the hatchet but it comes at a cost. It's much more difficult to use, but you will provide more group DPS. It's more useful for advanced tanks. It pairs well with the Warhammer for dealing with adds, but combined with a spear for bosses, allows you to optimize your attributes with more into decks, and you provide a lot more buffs and debuffs with more DPS. It's a DPS focused tank weapon. Spear is also a great tank weapon, even for lesser experienced tanks. Now Warhammer is the more useful for ad pulls, but a spear, is actually a better weapon for boss fights and provides great DPS with large weaken and ren debuffs which benefit you and your group. It will require frequent dodging to utilize it properly and you are more of a damage tank on bosses when doing this. Other good weapons include the hatchet which is a great beginner weapon. The great axe is useful in groups that don't have a great axe user already but you have to have somebody using a Warhammer as well. You can't just go with a Great Axe and then nobody with a Warhammer. If you don't have either, it's best just to stick with the Warhammer. And a Rapier can be quite good for tanks looking to push even more DPS in very optimized groups. So first of all, let's look at my Flail and Shield build for this. Now, obviously for your gem, you're going to want to use a Cut Pristine Carnelian gem. Absolutely vital with this weapon. Weapon perks that you're going to get, Refresh Your Move, Life Stealing. In this case, we're going to be using the Odo Artifact, so you're going to need to put a gem slot for your final perk when you upgrade this. Other good weapon perks, if you're not using the Odo, would include things like Thwarting Strikes, Keen Vicious, Keen and Jagged. Basically damage buffs because the Flail does really low base damage. So we set this up with the skills here with Arcane Smite. We take these perks, Epic Flail. Reducing its cooldowns, we get the Ironclad Superiority because we're going to get 30% Fortify for 6 seconds. We get the Life Steal and the Deflecting Frailty. And then obviously the other skill here, Arcane Eruption. We use this because it inflicts 2 stacks of impairment for 6 seconds on all targets. Targets are also slugged. And follow-up attacks extend the duration of all debilitating status effects, Rend, Weaken, Exhaust and Disease. And if we've already applied those debuffs, having a 30% extension is really, really good. Now, all the perks that we're focusing on here are things like cooldown reduction. We've got impairment. We've got a nice buff here where we get lifesteal or we give another buff here that gives him power. Over on the other side, we've got our only real taunt skill on this weapon, which is warding bludgeon. This is a taunt. It's going to also do reinforced fortify. And again, we're looking at anything that gives us impairment stacks. We've got some damage absorption there. Again, we've got another thing here. Tower shield decreases crowd control duration by 10%. Heavy 5% absorption at full health, increases the maximum of 20% mitigation. So we are going to get some good mitigation here by using this weapon option. The flail and shield is a good tank weapon choice in New World and should be used as a main hand weapon. You have access to taunt skills plus a lot of weakening application to the enemy. Damage reduction for yourself, group damage buffs and passive healing. The cleric skills seem much more useful than the bastion abilities. So we have the option of using both, we've got multiple setups for this weapon over on my website, thetankclub.com, where we've got some different things depending on what you want to go for. The cleric abilities do scale a bit more with focus, meaning you get less healing if you are using healing skills, but it's still very much useful to use these. Now, an example rotation with this weapon, so you'd use Arcane Smite to do a gap close, place down the AoE, it will apply an impairment stack, it'll apply deflecting frailty, 
and 10% life steal for your group and give you another source of fortify. So you get some really nice damage reduction for yourself. You need to heavy attack within three seconds to gain another impairment stack. And impairment stacks mean you're weakening the enemy. You then want to use Warden Bludgeon to apply the AoE Taunt while also giving yourself the Reinforced Fortify and buffing a nearby ally and applying more impairment stacks. Heavy attack again. Always heavy attack after an ability. You activate Arcane Eruption to apply two impairment stacks. Do a follow-up attack to do the increased damage and extend the enemy debuff durations. You need to ensure not to block permanently. Each time you block an attack, remember to heavy after a heavy. We're going to benefit within an attribute distribution from doing this. When you block a hit, do a heavy attack back to the boss. It helps you regain stamina because you're not blocking, but also it gives us that benefit thanks to the attributes that we looked at before. Doing regular light attacks are essential to reduce your cooldowns via the refreshing move weapon perk, which allows you to recast abilities more often. Outside of this rotation of abilities and heavy attacks, you don't really have much incentive to stay on this weapon. You gain benefits by blocking or being hit, so your best bet is to kind of run through your abilities on both of your weapons, focus on being active with your other weapon in terms of damage, and when you need to turtle up, when you're taking a lot of damage, when your health is low, switch back to the flail and you'll get the benefit of the defensive buffs and perks that you have here. When we move on to the sword and shield, obviously for this again, the gem would be a cut pristine carnelian. Some of the best named swords that you can find for this, Stalagmite, Tiai Longsword as well, another good option. Weapon perks such as Refresh and Move, Enchanted, Empowering Whirling Blade, those kind of things on your sword are going to be very, very good. Now the skills we've gone for here are Whirling Blade, Shield Rush, and Defender's Resolve. We are focusing heavily into this Sword Master side, and this is going to really help us to increase our damage, but it's also going to improve our group damage. It's really important for this leadership Passive. While holding a sword, the damage of all group members is increased by 10%. It's a massive benefit to our group. So when we look at it, so we've got Whirling Blade. We've then got Opportunity. This inflicts Rend. So it's going to do an AoE Rend, 15% for 10 seconds. And also, it's going to reduce some cooldown for each enemy hit. So the more enemies that you hit, the quicker you're going to be able to use it again. It's got quite a short cooldown already, 12.6 seconds, because we have got some refreshing gear on. The buff lasts for 10 seconds, so you can virtually keep this Ren debuff active 100% of the time with pretty much one light attack with the refreshing move perk on your sword to get this back for the 100% uptime. The other passives we're using, like I say, buff our damage, but we need them because we need to unlock this. But we've got successful heavy attacks granting power. We've got the final attack of your light attack chain inflicts 15% Ren for two seconds. So again, another source of Ren there. Successfully hit with a heavy attack causes you to lose one debuff. Sword and Shield Critical Strike chance increased by 10%. When you block an attack, you gain a stack of Empower. Abilities deal 10% more damage to slowed foes. And while health is full, you deal 15% more damage. So we are focusing a bit on damage there. We've got some things that buff light attacks and some things that buff heavy attacks. This really feeds into that heavy after a heavy mentality. When a boss heavy attacks you, heavy attack it back and get yourself some nice benefits along the way. When we look on the defender side, we've gone for... The most important ones really are 15% increased physical armor, reduced damage from all magic types by 10%. When you block an attack, you gain 20% fortify, which is really, really strong, and then also increases incoming healing and regen by 10%. Now with Shield Rush, we do gain the benefit of doing some nice base damage, 100% weapon damage. We've also got improved Rush, which applies a 20% weaken for 10 seconds, which is really, really good. And we're gonna go more into this in a second. Now with Defender's Resolve, even more strong benefits. This is just an aura taunt. So if you use it, it pulls everything in the vicinity. You don't have to hit anything or do anything to any enemy. It will just pull them in and taunt them. But it also gives you reduced damage for eight seconds, which is really, really nice. We also get, if your health is above 50%, reduced damage increased by 20%. So a lot of damage reduction here. This is just super strong. And as you're starting to see, the only real benefits, like the main benefit of the flail, is the stacking weaken buff, which where we can stack weaken up to 30%, and you're able to maintain that with a super high uptime. When you switch to the sword, you've got a straight up damage buff, you've got really strong damage reduction, you've got lots of fortify, you have got fortify with the flail as well, but then we're still getting a decent amount of weaken here, and this is able to be procced every 10 seconds. This skill can be used every 16 seconds. If we're using light attacks and reducing the cooldowns, it could be even sooner, so that is a really good thing as well. So we're still able to offer some weaken, but we've now got the addition of some rend in there as well. The 15% rend 
and we don't get any rend whatsoever when using a flail. Sword and Shield is an excellent weapon choice for tanking in New World and should be the main weapon of choice for the majority of players. You have access to taunt skills plus lots of defensive benefits and obviously there's different ways to set this up that can be more beginner friendly. You'll see those in our beginner tank build that we've got over on the website and also the video on YouTube. This is an offensive setup where the leadership buff is obtained which gives you group that increased damage. It's essential to make sure you have a good setup when using the Sword and Shield though. This would include a tower shield with the fortifying shield rush perk and an amulet with the fortified perk. If you combine those two things with shield rush, you will be close to being immortal. So fortifying shield rush on a tower shield gives you 35% increased armor thanks to fortify for six seconds. By using an amulet with the fortified perk, fortify you apply last 34% longer. So obviously when you do that, and you're also using light attacks with a sword that has the refreshing move perk. You're able to cast this ability almost on cooldown and maintain almost 100% uptime of a 35% fortify. It just makes you extremely strong and almost unkillable. So when we're doing a rotation with this weapon, if we do an example rotation, you want to instigate combat with shield rush. So you aim your shield rush, you want to go charging through the enemies. And this will generate a good amount of initial threat. And it will also proc that fortifying shield rush perk on your shield to make you very defensively strong. You next want to use defender's resolve to kind of get a taunt on everything in the surrounding area. But to also further buff your defense and incoming healing. You finally use that whirling blade when all enemies are stacked in and really close to apply rend. And then light attack as much as possible on this weapon. When you do so your cooldowns get reduced thanks to that refreshing move perk which is an essential thing. And it will buff your uptimes, your survival, and you'll also have better stamina sustained for blocking and dodging. Because when you're doing light attacks, you're not blocking, so you're regaining stamina. Cast Shield Rush as much as possible. Every time you use it, you weaken the enemy by 20% and you gain Fortify to buff yourself up. You need to try and cast Whirling Blade as often as possible as well to maintain the Rend debuff. And ensure not to block permanently. Each time you block an attack, heavy after a heavy, when you block a hit, do a heavy back to the enemy, which will help you to regain stamina and make use of those attribute perks. Moving on to the Warhammer. This is an offhand weapon. So you back bar your secondary weapon. You're going to need again to use a cut pristine Carnelian. The weapon perks that you're really looking for here. Sundering clear out, thwarting strikes. Things that buff you up, such as keen, vicious, keen, empowered are nice. Having some life, life stealing on there can be useful as well. So those are some options for you. One of the best named Warhammers that I found is the Tanglevine Warhammer. For more information on the best like weapons that you can find for tanks, check out my tank gear guide over on the website. So if we take a look at the different abilities that we're using here. So we've first of all got Armor Breaker, which is going to penetrate 35% of the target's armor and deals a really strong amount of weapon damage. We've got Shockwave, which slams your hammer into the ground. It staggers and stuns enemies. And it also does a taunt, which is really nice. And then we've also got a wide swing that knocks back targets by 4 meters and deals 100% weapon damage. Now to go alongside this, Shockwave also has this passive here which applies weaken to the enemies and we've got the increased range. Now this used to be a bad skill because what it would do is it would knock back enemies and so I didn't use it for a really long time. I've only started using it again this patch because also there's the strong weapon perk. So the Sundering Clear Out weapon perk is going to give you a huge amount of rend. So a 25% rend for 7 seconds. This has a 12 second cooldown. You can almost cast it on cooldown and get the benefit of that huge amount of rend. Which is excellent. Now not only that but you've got obviously it grants fortify by 20% to all friendly allies within 6 meters. Now this is really strong. I found that when you're going into a really difficult ad pull. If this is the way they instigate combat. So you go into a fight. You hit clear out. It debuffs the enemy. But it gives you group that buff. It stops them from dying. It's absolutely fantastic. And obviously the cooldown gets reduced for each enemy hit. So this is a really strong skill now. It no longer pushes enemies away. They just kind of roll over on the spot. They don't get go flying across the room. That's why I didn't used to like it. Because you want to stack enemies up. You don't want to go into an expedition and be throwing enemies around. You want them to be stacked up so your group can kill them faster. The last thing you want to do is have enemies flying around the room. So this is why I never used to use this. But now they don't do that. They just roll about on the spot. Really, really strong skill. When we look at Armor Breaker, now this is more of a boss fight kind of setup. This is me planning for the situation where I'm intending to use the Warhammer 
with a sword, for example, or a flail or whatever, and I'm not planning on swapping it to a spear. And for that reason, I've gone with Armor Breaker. Now, if I wasn't going to be using this on a boss fight, I wouldn't use Armor Breaker. I would actually use Wrecking Ball because by having Clear Out, by having Shockwave and Wrecking Ball, you, this absolute juggernaut in Adpul. So especially on M3 Expeditions, when you've got lots of enemies, it's very, very difficult. So if you are just using a Warhammer for Adpuls, go and check out the setup on my website. I've got an additional setup just for like an Adpul setup, just for dealing with trash. This is a general setup for dealing with trash and bosses. So when we do that, we are focusing on with Armor Breaker, which penetrates the armor. It, you get grit when you use it, and it inflicts rend, a 30% rend for 10 seconds. The skill duration is 10 seconds already, so we can maintain this 100%. Absolutely fantastic. And then obviously we've got rend there. This is going to apply rend as well when we look at it in a few minutes. We're going to use a gear piece with the Sundering Shockwave um, perk on as well. We've got Sundering Clear Out, so it's just an absolute huge amount of rend that we're able to obtain. Now the other things that we're going to benefit from here, increased armor pen for all basic attacks. We're going to get Empower from heavy attacks. We're going to get Grit when we get heavy attacks, but also 12% damage reduction while Grit is active. Absolutely huge. 12% damage reduction while Grit is active is a massive, massive benefit to you as a tank. Increased heavy attack damage by 15% against targets under 30% health. We want to take this one. Heavy attacks reduce your cooldowns by 7% and also deal 35% extra damage after one second after taking damage. Like I say, this is focusing in on a fact that in ad pulls, you would be using an ability to crowd control and then a light attack. An ability, then a light attack. But on bosses, you wouldn't be doing that as much. You might be doing, you'd be doing extra heavy attacks because you're going to have skills on cooldown and in between your skills on a boss, you're going to be using heavy attacks more than light attacks to try and push out more damage. And that's why we've gone with these particular perks. It's a very different setup if you're just going for the ad pull setup, like I mentioned, that's on my website. Now, when we switch over to the other side, we've got this one, which increases armor by 20% if surrounded by two or more enemies within three meters. So lots of damage reduction, which is just fantastic, combined with all the other sources that we've mentioned. We've also got reduced hammer cooldowns by 7% when using a light attack against the target with an active debuff. Now, this is a debuff that applies rend. This is going to apply rend. This is going to apply rend. We also get weaken. So basically, every time you cast an ability, if you're doing a light attack straight after you're going to get 7% reduction. So like this is what I'm saying. In an ad pull, you'll go in, you'll crowd control the enemy with a skill, you'll do a light attack, and you'll just be able to get your skills back so that you can basically keep enemies crowd controlled 100% of the time. It's absolutely crazy. We've also got this one, increased damage against enemies that have got a debuff, and then also heal for 35% of the damage dealt when using a crowd crush ability. So those are the perks we're going to use. If you have a group member using a spear, then you won't actually need to use Armor Breaker because the Rend will be covered. So use Wrecking Ball instead. Use my Adpul setup like I mentioned already. Uh, this weapon is an absolute monster for Adpuls due to the crowd control benefits, the application of Rend and Weaken to the enemy. It's just a generally good tank weapon for the survival and sustain on offer with the Warhammer passives. So a general rotation would be to run into an Adpul, use Clear Out to control the enemies, to apply that Sunder and Clear Out perk, this also provides you with a group fortified buff. Light attack to proc that acceleration passive. Next, you want to use shockwave, and this will combine an AoE taunt, a stagger, a stun, weaken, and rend all into one fantastic skill. Ideally, you need to have the sundering shockwave perk on one of your armor pieces to benefit from that. Light attack again to reduce your ability cooldowns. Now, with the ample setup, to keep control of the enemies, you'd use wrecking ball, which smashes them into the ground and keeps them in place longer. Also buffs you up with Fortify. If you're not using that skill and using Armor Breaker, use Armor Breaker instead once the enemies are stacked and crowd controlled. So use this skill to apply another Rend debuff source and give your group a huge amount of increased damage. Light attack between every single skill to proc that acceleration passive. That's vital so that you can crowd control constantly. Keep enemies basically stuck to the spot until they die. It's unreal. On boss fights, use heavy attacks more to benefit from the passives that increase your damage. And then we go on to the spear, which is another offhand weapon. The gem would be the Cut Pristine Carnelian, the weapon perks. You want to use Enfeebling Skewer, and then Vicious and Keen. Another good option would be Keenly Empowered, Keenly Jagged, Thwarting Strikes. Some of the best named spears you can get, the Azoth Crystal Spear, the Commandant Spear. More information on my tank gear guide over on the website. Now for the abilities here, we have got Cyclone, which performs a spin attack, so AoE damage, slows enemies, and it's a taunt as well. 
We've then got Preferate, which does three quick attacks, and it applies a stacking Rend debuff, which is really, really nice. And then we've got Skewer. So the perks you want to take, you obviously want to take this one here, which restores stamina per target hit. So the more enemies that you hit, the more stamina you get back. So really, really nice. We also get restore stamina on critical hits. Dodge backwards to consume 20% less stamina after for two seconds after a successful hit. Critical chance increased by 10% when attacking targets that are three meters away. Other ones over here, light attacks have a 5% increased crit chance. When we look at Preferate, we've also got the Rend here, which increases it to 10% per strike against targets above 50%. Each attack inflicts a stack of Weaken as well to the target, reducing their tar like the outgoing damage. So we're doing Rend and Weaken with this skill. So two things into one. With Skewer, you want to take everything. So we get a Bleed. It applies a Bleed, which deals weapon damage. It does increase damage against targets that have full health. You gain Empower if it crit hits, which increases damage. And the bleed duration is increased, and this is important. So when we look at these ones, all spear cooldowns are reduced by 10% on the second hit of a light attack chain. Deal 10% increased damage against targets with less than 30% health. We've got the first successful hit of an ability within 2 seconds of dodging reduces all spear cooldowns by 20%. So we've got this reduced uh, dodge backwards here, and then we're going to get reduced cooldowns after dodging. We then get crit chance is increased by 15% against all bleeding targets. As we mentioned here, this applies a bleed. This increases the duration of the bleed, and then this gives us higher crit chance. And with higher crit chance, we're going to get stamina back. We then get crit hit extends the duration of your spear debuffs by 20%. So when we hit this rend and weaken debuff here, it's going to increase the duration by 20% when we do a crit. And obviously we're getting all these benefits of crit all across these passives. And then finally the thing over here. Deal 10% bonus damage for each debuff on your target. And we're already applying quite a few debuffs ourselves. Like I say, we've got bleed, weaken, rend, all sorts of stuff going on. Really, really strong. So spear is a really strong tank weapon, especially on boss fights specifically. They are not as useful, however, if you have one other person in your group using one. If you can use one, then you have access to great DPS and some good group benefits. You would only typically use a spear on boss fights and maintain using a Warhammer during ad pulls due to the fact that Warhammer is great for crowd control and the spear is not. Spear is highly reliant on you being a damage focused tank. Everything in this build revolves around debuffing the enemy, applying bleed, crit hitting as much as possible and then dodging backwards frequently. Combining all of these things helps you increase DPS but also helps with sustain, increases uptimes to debuffs and reduces your spear cooldowns. Now the way you want to maximize your spear, so activate your skewer to leap into the fight and apply that bleed to the enemy. The Enfeebling Skewer perk when applied to a spear weapon applies a 47% weaken when you use the skewer ability. Absolutely huge. Use Cyclone on cooldown for the AoE Taunt, the Slow, the Stamina Regen, the Self Healing you get from the weapon perk. Hit enemies with the Preferate to apply Rend and Weaken. Dodge backwards to avoid hits as it's cheaper and follow up immediately with an attack to reduce cooldowns. Light attacks to increase damage, and the second light attack in the chain will reduce cooldowns. So it's important to always try and do two light attacks at least, rather than just doing like a light attack, then a skill, light attack, then a skill. Make sure you do two, so you get that cooldown reduction. Reapply Preferate on cooldown to maintain Rend and Weaken. By doing a critical hit, this will extend the duration by 20%. So there's a lot of things there. It's a very damage-focused weapon, but it's super, super strong if you can make use of it. The final weapon we're looking at is the Greatsword. Again, the gem would be a cut pristine Carnelian. The weapon perks that you want to look at, Trench and Strikes, Slowing Rupture, Attunements, there's you there's a heavy focus around heavy attack in here. So anything that will buff or benefit you from heavy attacks or give you heavy, heavy attack increased damage, that's what you want to go for. Some of the best named great swords include the Serenity Artifact. We've got some other options on my tank gear guide or on the website. So utilizing this as a tank weapon, the skills we want to use are Relentless Rush, Dash Through Enemies, Spin Around, it applies a slow and it does damage. We also get Calamity Counter, and we've got Roaring Rupture. Uh, this is gonna be a taunt skill, and it also gives us Fortify, it generates threat. Now the passes we're gonna use in here, so we haven't really got many over on this Onslaught side, so Charge Heavy Attacks have 15% Armor Pen. Become Energized by landing a crit hit and regain five stamina and 5% base health per second for five seconds, really nice buff. And after dodging, gain 10% in power for the next three hits within 10 seconds. Attacks empowered by this effect restore 10 stamina. We've also got this one here which gain 10% in power for 10 seconds after hitting a target with Relentless Rush. So we're kind of, it's like a gap closer we're going to use to get into the enemies. When we look over here, the perks we've got here, we've got if you are hit while at full health, reduce the damage taken by 20% and then gain 20% fortify. 
After gaining Defiant Stance, you also gain Fortify, increasing your on by 25% for the next hit taken within 5 seconds. Base damage is increased by 3% for each Greatsword buff on you. Charge Heavy Attacks have Grit and Inflict Bleeding for 6 seconds, dealing 5% weapon damage every second. You can now block 100% of the ranged attack damage while using a Greatsword. And additionally, you also reduce the stamina damage from all attacks by blocking by 10%. Uh, reduce the attacker's stamina damage dealt by 50% when blocking attacks just after raising your guard or with guard point. Blocking attacks within this window inflicts a 5% rend for 10 seconds against melee attacks. This is really important. This is a really important passive here, and we're going to explain that in a second. Obviously, here as well, we've got uh, inflicts bleeding and counterattack crit chance increased by 25%. Uh, and you can get like a nice heal for 20% of the damage or onslaught. The counterattack gains an additional 25% crit chance. Over here, we've got cleanse two debuffs after using this skill. You've also got the shockwave that pushes foes outwards by three meters. But like if you're in the onslaught, it pulls them in three meters. So obviously we've got the two different options there. The shockwave applies a 10% weaken for 10 seconds on hit. So we've got an up, we've got access to a weaken, we've got access to a rend there. We've got some nice perks and benefits. Now the great sword is an alternative main hand weapon that you would use in place of a sword or a flail and shield to deliver more DPS. It does require much more effort and is better used by an experienced tank. By using a greatsword, you also get access to additional sources of random weaken on your main hand weapon, which should help you maintain higher uptimes on those debuffs. You also gain a good increase in DPS. The downside is it can be hard to manage your stamina. You take increased damage compared to the sword and shield and the flail as well. It's generally harder to use because your intention is to play more offensively when using this weapon. You'll likely need to change attributes to support the use of a greatsword with more into decks, which also contributes to making the survival more challenging, which is the sacrifice that's made to output more damage. So to maximize the greatsword, you want to use Relentless Rush for positioning and moving quickly into fights and outputting more DPS. Apply Weaken to enemies with your Roaring Rupture, which also generates a lot of threat, taunts, and applies a stack of fortifying buff to you. Calamity Counter gives you an additional taunt, but the passives on this are the strong option. With the bleed application and the critical calamity passive providing some nice benefits. You inflict rend on the enemy by maintaining your faultless defender passive, which is obtained when you have the defiant stance active. You then need to charge up heavy attacks and be hit. The guard point buff will block attacks and then proc the faultless defender passive. So that is how you get access to this faultless defender to get that rend. You need to dodge to activate in power and make sure you're performing regular heavy attacks with the greatsword. We're now going to move on to gear, and for your gear, you want to run a heavy armor setup to achieve a heavy equip load. Now, for all the different gear options that you can get, go and check out my tank gear guide. There's lots of different sets that you can farm that are going to give you different perks and benefits. It's really up to you what sort of things you want to go for. When you are experienced and you have an organized group, using light or medium might also be an option for more advanced tanking if you're more of a score pusher and looking to do more DPS. The game has got a bit harder with the Rise of the Angry Earth patch. The current M3 expeditions seem to be much more challenging than the previous M10s, so that is something to think about. Now, best in slot gear will include perks that buff your weapon abilities, things like Contagious Reverse Stab, Legion Cyclone, Relentless Freedom. These are combined with both the refreshing and or a health perk. You can only use a maximum of four refreshing perks now, just remember that because it's been changed, so you can't really use a full set of refreshing anymore. So. Having it in there is still useful to reduce your cooldowns, but it's not as vital as it used to be. Now, other useful perks include Enchanted Ward, which reduces your damage by 4% from light and heavy attacks per piece. You've also got Grit Ward, which if you are using 300 Constitution, this could be quite useful. So you get 4% reduced damage while under the effects of Grit. Now, Grit Ward in a lot of ways seems somewhat better because it's 4% damage just generally. So 4% damage reduction while under the effects of grit whereas enchanted ward is specifically light and heavy attacks so you need to decide if you want to focus on one or the other really other semi-useful perks invigorated freedom and vigor also have some use for pve tanking and then to a lesser degree elemental aversion and physical aversion now one thing to note is when you look at elemental and physical aversion it says specifically so let's take for example physical aversion receive 4.2% less damage from ranged physical attacks. It's not just physical damage, it's ranged physical damage. So there's very few attacks in the game that classify as ranged physical damage specifically. And it's the same with elemental aversion. So receive 4.2% less damage from ranged elemental attacks. 
it's more likely that you are going to get hit by a ranged elemental attack. But then there are some occasions, so if you take the Forge last boss, for example, that boss hits you with flame damage. But it's not going to be affected by using elemental aversion, because that's going to do nothing. Because that boss is a melee boss with an elemental attack, so it doesn't matter. It's not a ranged attack, it's a melee attack, so that would not reduce that damage. So it's a bit weird to try and use physical or elemental aversion, so I wouldn't focus too much attention into those perks. Protection perks are also very helpful. Now to find out which protection perks you need to use, you can switch these out for different expeditions for each boss, and also for different mutation types. Go and take a look at my New World Ward and Protection article on my website. So armor perks. These are the perks you need to use on your armor pieces depending on which weapon you're using. These perks will buff up your weapon abilities to give you more function for each ability. And they're essential for like that harder end game tanking. So if you are using a flail, you're going to want to use weapon perks on your gear. Crowded bludgeon and powerful eruption. Crowded bludgeon, if two or more targets are hit with your warding bludgeon, even if the hits are blocked, it reduces the cooldown by 25%. So your taunt is regenerated faster and you get access to that skill faster, which is really nice. And the other one, eruption hits deal 10% increased damage per stack of impairment on the target. And you can get three stacks really easily. You can maintain it a really high uptime as well. So you're going to get a nice damage increase there by using that perk on one of your gear pieces. If you're using a sword, then the only real piece that you need here is the accelerated resolve. And this is going to be giving you a 21% increase in movement speed when Defender's Resolve is triggered, and also incoming healing is increased by 8.5% for 6 seconds. So that's a really nice perk to have on one of your gear pieces. The other ones would be Empowering Whirling Blade and Fortifying Shield Rush, but both of these are going to be on your weapon and shield. So Empowering Whirling Blade would go on your weapon generally when 3 or more enemies are within the radius, while performing a Whirling Blade attack, you get 52% base damage, which is nice. And in Fortifying Shield Rush, as we've talked about already, when you put this on your Tower Shield, you get a Fortify buff, increasing armor by 35% for 6 seconds. But you want to have that on a shield, not on a piece of gear. When we look at the Warhammer, so depending on what you... If you are using the Armor Breaker skill, then obviously on your armor, you would need Empowering Armor Breaker. If Armor Breaker... Breaks a block, the next attack within 5 seconds deals 25% more damage, which is nice, but not necessarily always going to be procs very often. It's it's kind of like a low proc chance. You've also got Penetrating Wrecking Ball if you are using Wrecking Ball instead of Armor Breaker, which Wrecking Ball penetrates 21% of the target's armor. So, really nice. The most important one to have on an armor piece is Sundering Shockwave. So, Shockwave inflicts Rend, reducing the target's armor by 10% for 10 seconds. And also Sunder and Clear Out, this should be on your Warhammer, it's really important. 25% Rend for 7 seconds when you use Clear Out, so really, really strong. On the Greatsword, we've got Relentless Freedom, which would be used on a gear piece, activating Relentless Rush, removes Slow and Roots, increases Relentless Rush critical chance by 13%, so that's a nice little benefit. We've got a good sustain one here, so when Calamity Counter is activated, immediately gain 22 Stamina. And then slowing rupture should be on your weapon if possible, but if not, you put it on a piece of gear. So slow enemies struck with roaring rupture by 25% for 5 seconds. So it slows them down as well, which is another buff. If you are using the spear, enfeebling skewer is a really strong benefit. So skewer hits, apply weaken, reducing the target's damage by 47%. And you want to have this perk on your weapon because it's a huge weaken debuff. The weaken cap is 70% and you can pretty much get it just with a spear on its own thanks to using this along with one of your other skills. There's also Leech and Cyclone and when you put this on a gear piece it heals you for 35% of the weapon damage and it hits multiple targets so a max of three targets so it's a nice little heal it helps you because you are quite vulnerable when you are a tank using a spear so this does help with a bit of extra healing. You've also got Fortifying Preferate which is a nice little buff when you put this on your armor you get a 10% Fortify buff for six seconds. Now, other gear perks. So for the rest of your gear, you can focus on various other details to improve your build. So protection perks should be used on your shields and your amulet. These are particularly useful to have, and you can match them against specific mutation types and boss damage types to reduce your incoming damage. As I've mentioned already, we've got a Warden Protection article on the website, which you can see the damage types of every boss and mutation in New World, and it'll tell you which thing is the most suitable. The most useful are... Slash protection, strike protection, flame protection, and void protection. Those are the ones 
that are going to do the most damage from bosses. So most bosses are one of those four damage categories. Now, if you are looking at reducing the damage from mutated expeditions, you would also consider using pr the protection perks of Frozen, Flame, Nature, and Void. Those are the main sources that you get in mutations. But it's when you go onto bosses that you want to look at that strike, slash, flame, or void protection. So tower shields must have the fortifying shield rush perk if you're using a sword and shield and to play the build most effectively. But shields also require the shield defense and sturdy perks as well. If we really look at it, so for a shield, if you are using a, a sword and a shield, fortifying shield rush perk is essential. You want a shield ward perk on your shield. So either slash, strike, flame or void, depending on the boss type. So try and focus your shield to deal with boss damage. So focus that in. So you can find a list of every boss in the game and what their main damage type is. And it's going to be one of those four. The secondary most important perks, shield defense, 5% damage reduction. Perk number three would be sturdy, 10% less stamina damage while blocking. And then if you're using a flail or if you've got space, sturdy energy is another good option. Because when blocking a hit while below 30% stamina, you gain 42% stamina regeneration for six seconds. So it's going to make you gain your stamina back faster when you drop your block. For an amulet, the most important perk is the protection perk. And you want to match this to the mutation type. So if you're going to match your shield ward perk to the boss type of damage, try and match your amulet protection perk to the mutation type, which is always going to be frozen, flame, nature, or void. So in, realistically, you're going to need four different amulets and four different shields if you really want to optimize to the max on the damage reduction. The other really important perk here would be a health perk on your amulet because you're going to get 7% max health. Your third perk on an amulet is a choice between divine to increase the health look of incoming healing effects by 10% or fortified if you're using a sword and shield or if you've got lots of fortify sources. So fortifies you apply last 34% longer. Both are really good options and it's really up to you which one you want to choose there. For earring, my favorite perks are refreshing toast and nimble. So refreshing toast, potion cooldowns are 10% faster. Nimble gives you 10% increased stamina regen rate there's lots of kind of new perks for the earring and jewelry now but a lot of them like giving you benefits when you use the heart rune and things like that they're so infrequently benefited from that i don't feel like it's worth using it instead of these ones now the third perk on your earring despised is an option to get 159 percent more threat if you're having trouble maintaining aggro of enemies if you're absolutely fine with your aggro then purifying toast would be the next best one so when you drink a regen potion you lose one debuff another strong option is regenerating so you gain health every second and this actually helps with your threat generation because it's basically like a heal because you're healing healing actually increases threat against enemies and so this will help you a little bit with your threat generation because you're regenerating health so that's really nice finally when we look at the ring you want to go with hearty to give you 10 percent more stamina leeching is another really strong perk 7.1 percent more um, health incoming when you deal damage and then enfeebling is really strong. So weakens that you apply last 32% longer. So with a warhammer, with a spear, if you're using a flail, all really good weapons to benefit from the enfeebling perk. You could also use a damage perk, so things that buff your slash damage or strike damage, whatever damage type you're doing as the main priority. This is especially useful to use a damage perk if you are using something like a spear or a warhammer, even the flail, because the flail does quite low base damage. So getting increased damage there with a the damage perk is another good option. So I'm just going to show you a couple of example builds on the screen now. And as you can see, this is kind of the setup that we're looking for. So if we look at the base kind of sword and warhammer build, the Azoth crystal set that you get from any M2 expedition is a good option. It comes with refreshing enchanted ward. And then like, for example, we'd add on that accelerating resolve or health. Great option for the um, armor artifact would be the void dark plate it gives us dark reinforced enchanted ward physical aversion add on a bit of health there or sturdy energy would be good azoth crystal gauntlets refreshing enchanted ward sundering shockwave because we're using the hammer if we look at the greaves again refreshing enchanted ward empowering armor breaker or wrecking ball and then with the sabatons refreshing enchanted ward and health so you can kind of mix and match those any way you want. You can put the weapon perks on any piece. It doesn't have to be those specific ones. This is just an example. And then for like the main hand, we've got the sword, the Tai Yi long sword with the refreshing move, the trench and rend and the empowering whirling blade on the shield with the fortifying shield rush, the sturdy, the shield defense, and then the shield ward or sturdy energy. And then offhand with the Tangle Vine Warhammer, Sundering Clear Out, Trench and Strikes, Keen. 
that life ring amulet there this is a farmable amulet that comes with divine and health already you would need to farm four of these and then put the different perks on there and then make sure you put a mutation specific perk so if you've got like a frost protection amulet make sure you put a frost gem on there as well to reduce frost damage for the ring i personally really like blood drinker you could use the azoth crystal ring as well but the ghoul's harmony leeching hearty and feebling and then this corruption earring at the bottom there with refreshing toast nimble and purifying toast to give you a nice kind of example build to use we're almost at the end now we're just going to look at the last few things so we've got the heart rune sort of very good heart runes that you could use grasping vines brutal heart rune of grasping vines is my preference for ad pulls so when you are going through ad pulls grasping vines is strong enfeebling vines inflicts weaken on successful hits reduces the target's damage by 20% for eight seconds and rending vines inflicts rend on successful hits reducing the target's damage absorption by 20% for five seconds but also reducing your stamina regen by 50% for five seconds so it's really good for ad pulls to go in there with your warhammer debuffing them with this when you get to a boss though or a really hard ad pull the stalwart heart rune of stone form is absolutely unbelievable this gives you the base of the, you, you can't st be staggered for a few seconds you get that fortifying form increases your damage absorption for 10 seconds it heals you for 75 percent of the rune heart rune damage per second while active and the amount that it heals is huge so it basically keeps you alive it's an emergency button you will not die when you press this especially if you are using a sword and shield and you get all those nice perks and benefits with that as well so those are your two strongest options and then finally, we go on to the consumables. So to maximize your ability as a tank, you'll want to use a range of consumables that give you a number of different boosts. The most of the consumables benefit your damage. Even as a newer tank, you should at least be using the minor housing trophies and things like that that give you 9% more damage to a certain enemy type, dependent on the expedition that you do, and they're very cheap to buy. Weapon coatings and honing stones are really good damage increases and pretty cheap options are available. Like just use the lower graded ones if you can't afford the expensive ones. With the potions, you've got to use all different potions for different situations. So health potions, regen potions, ward potions. You can have more slotted. They don't share a cooldown. You can use them all at the same time. And then using other things for reducing damage as well. First, we've got the food. So I really like banana bread. I use banana bread to balance out my attributes so I don't go too high into con and so I can balance con and strength. That's going to give 48 more strength and it lasts for 50 minutes. You could also use the constitution option as well. That gives 48 constitution. With your potions, you've got infused health potions. These should be used in an emergency situation to boost your health. So use it when you've lost health. Regain some health back nice and easy. You've also got infused regeneration potions. Now these should be used on cooldown, especially in boss fights and harder content. They just keep ticking, incoming healing. And so they're really useful to have running at all times for that reason. You've then also got ward potions. So ancient, angry earth, beast, corrupt, human, and lost. These reduce your damage to a specific enemy type. And this information can be found on our water protection guide to see which potions you need to use in each content. Once you know which one to use, use a potion at the start of an expedition and you're protected to the enemy's damage type for 40 minutes. It's a huge, huge benefit. When you, in, when you use the infused potions, you get 10% damage absorption for like against ancients, for example, for 40 minutes. So... A really nice benefit to use that. And then when you move on to weapon coatings, it's like the same thing, but for damage. So you've got the infused coatings, ancient, angry earth, beast, corrupt, human, and lost. And you apply these to your weapon to increase the damage that you do to a specific enemy type. So apply these to your weapon, you're going to do increased damage. And the reason you need to use coating is because you apply it once to your weapon at the start of an expedition, you do increase damage to that enemy type. And by increasing your damage, you'll have a much easier time maintaining aggro while also killing enemies faster and the extra damage will stack with the damage gained from other things like honing stones, combat trophies and all that other stuff. When we look at honing stones, you use one at the start of an expedition again, gives you increased damage throughout which is necessary to help generate that threat and maintain aggro. There's no reason not to use them, even as a tank. It's additional extra damage and like even if you can't afford to buy the strongest version, the powerful version, just buy the lower end stuff that's kind of cheap and you're still going to get a nice damage increase even the common honing stones give you five percent increased damage which is something you can't really afford to lose out on when you're trying to generate threat and you have to do damage and you have to be doing that to gain that threat with the combat trophies you can place one of each trophy per house and you can own three houses so you could have for example three angry earth combat trophies in your houses between the three houses that you've got and this would increase your damage by a significant amount so even with the minor trophies, again, these can be found really easily. They can be crafted quite cheaply. They can be bought from the trading post really cheap. 
with three of those, you'd gain 9% increased damage. With the major combat trophies, you get 15% more damage against a specific enemy type. So these are something that you really need to have in your house because they're going to give you a nice damage buff to the enemy. Incense is the next one, and it's a good way to increase your overall resistances to afflictions. Use them to assist with reducing incoming damage. These are long-lasting benefits up to 50 minutes with a powerful incense. So things like poison, disease, bleed, frostbite, curse, and blight, you're going to be protected. Use them at the start of an expedition when you're expecting those things to happen, and it's going to be beneficial because you're going to avoid those things just a little bit more. And then finally, you've got Oak Flesh Bomb and Gemstone Dust. So one of them's for physical damage, one of them's for elemental damage. If you know the kind of damage type you're going to be dealing with and you're really struggling, have these available, activate them, and they're going to give you a nice benefit and reduce the damage that's incoming. So if you use the powerful versions, you get a 35% damage absorption increase for 20 seconds or until you get hit 15 times to either the physical or the elemental damage. So use them in those tricky situations to avoid dying. So that is everything for this New World Tank build. If you've got any questions, please let us know in the comments below. You can go and post over on our Discord, which is probably a bit more accessible in terms of getting answers as well. And we've got loads and loads of members there. So if you do have any questions about anything relating to New World Tanking, please go and ask on our Discord. Thank you very much to everyone who's been watching our videos and supporting us recently. It's very much appreciated. Thank you as well to our YouTube members and our patrons. If you do want to sign up and join us, then please do so. That will give you access to some nice benefits over on our Discord where you get access to one-to-one -one direct help with a priority ticketing system. So go and check that out. And obviously, if you sign up, anyone who subs at any level gets access to that support. So we're happy to help all of our subscribers to give that extra little benefit to say thank you. Thank you very much for watching this very long video. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.